We're continuing our studies in Chapter 16 on Photosynthesis, and the subject of this lesson is Photosystem 2. We'll see that this is where the light reactions of photosynthesis begin. I'd also like to refer you to a nice animation on bacterial photosynthesis included in the chapter web links for Chapter 16 on our Canvas website. In the light reactions of photosynthesis, there are actually two reaction centers, photosystems 1 and 2, though the process begins at photosystem 2. Excitation of reaction center chlorophylls drives a series of redox reactions. The results are that water becomes oxidized to oxygen gas, we reduce NADP plus to NADPH, and a proton gradient is produced in the process. The reaction centers in these, com in these complexes are similar to the ones we saw in the electron transport system of mitochondria. Here's a model of photosystem 2. The protein is in gray and the light pigments or photoreceptors are the various colors. As you can see, there's a protein architecture, but there are a lot of different types of pigment molecules so that they can capture light of different energy and pass it on to the next component. Photosystem 2 has two reaction centers, each with two chlorophylls. The chlorophylls absorb light of a wavelength of 680 nanometers. And so it's referred to as P680 chlorophyll, P4 pigment or photoreceptor. It begins with a photooxidation event, and that's what's illustrated at the top of the screen here. Here's our ground state P6 eddy. The first event is light absorption. And remember, it's going to collect that light energy from the light harvesting complex. That promotes one of those delocalized electrons to an excited state, and that's illustrated here as P680 asterisk. Under those conditions, the excited state molecule will readily give up an electron so that it can return to the ground state energy, but you'll notice it's been oxidized. It's carrying a positive charge. To return to its original form, we need to collect an electron from some source. Here's that same photooxidation viewed from the change in reduction potential. So on our scale here, this is our standard reduction potential in volts. We have low reduction potential at the top and high reduction potential at the bottom. Let's follow the process. Here's our ground state P680 molecule. The first event is light absorption. And again, that promotes it to a higher energy state. And now we have our P680 asterisk. Notice the change in the reduction potential. In our ground state, very high reduction potential. In our excited state, a low reduction potential. And keep in mind what that means. Remember, electrons flow spontaneously from low to high reduction potentials. And our next component to pick up that electron is a pheophyton present in photosystem 2. If we look at our ground state molecule and that high reduction potential, there's no way to transfer the electron from the ground state P680 to pheophyton. That's why light absorption must occur first so that it can be promoted to a state where it has a very low reduction potential and can pass that electron on to the next component. As it does so, of course, it's become oxidized. It's returned to the ground state, but now it's carrying a positive charge. We're going to collect electrons from water to replace the ones we lost through photooxidation. Here's a close-up of the pigment molecules and redox centers in photosystem 2. It's not important you know the details, just the general direction of electron flow. Here's our reaction center, P680 chlorophylls. There are also accessory chlorophylls pictured in yellow. They don't really participate in electron transfer. The transfer electrons is from P680 to pheophyton, and then eventually to plastoquinone. There are actually two plastoquinones, one tightly bound that remains associated with the complex, and one that's loosely bound. And that's important because the plastoquinone functions very similar to the quinone we saw in the electron transport chain. It's going to carry those electrons to the next component in the chain. It's important it be soluble within the membrane. So you'll notice there's also an iron 
it doesn't directly accept the electron, but it does seem to assist in the process. You'll notice that the transfer of electrons is from the luminal to the stromal side, that is from the inside to the outside. So we've carried out our photooxidation event, our uh, P680 chlorophyll is oxidized, we need to replace those electrons and they're going to come from water. That's carried out by a separate protein system within the complex. It's referred to as the oxygen evolving complex. This OEC is going to oxidize two water molecules to one oxygen molecule. In the process it will release four protons and four electrons and those electrons are going to replace the ones that we lost in photooxidation. This oxygen evolving complex or OEC, although it's a separate component, it is considered part of photosystem too. It generates most of the atmospheric oxygen and we can produce about 50 oxygens per second in this system. You'll notice this is the opposite of the oxygen reduction that we saw in electron transport. Keep in mind, however, that the electrons that are passed to plastic quinone are coming from that reaction center chlorophyll and it's a photooxidation. So the first event is photon absorption. The electrons are passed and then they come as replacement electrons from water. So for every electron passed, there's a photooxidation event and therefore a photon absorbed. You'll notice as we oxidize the water to oxygen, we also release protons and are thereby contributing to a proton gradient. Notice the orientation. The protons are accumulating on the lumen, that is the inside of the thylakoid. Well, what makes this oxidation of water possible? Remember in chapter 15 we saw that oxygen has the highest reduction potential, so it's much more likely to take electrons than it is to give it up in the form of water. What makes this possible? Well this oxygen evolving complex of photosystem 2 has a special cofactor, a manganese catalyst, and that's illustrated here. As you can see it contains both manganese and calcium and oxygen have to have some very strong arms to pull that electron off water to produce oxygen. It goes through multiple oxidation state changes in order to do this. The electrons that are extracted from water through this manganese catalyst are thereby passed to a tyrosine radical and it's that radical that transfers the electron back to the reaction center that's been oxidized. In our next video lesson, we'll look at photosystem 1 and its function and see how it is similar to photosystem 2 and also how these two systems differ. We also want to compare some of the components involved in photosynthesis and see if they are similar to those that we saw in electron transport in our previous chapter.